guys, welcome back everyone, welcome back. Ooh, hope you enjoyed that brutal OST because we have returned with the grand finals of WTL 20, 2023 Winter Kung Fu Cup round number 10. The second last Kung Fu Cup of the year. There's only one left next week, or I think the week after, and that's it. Then they do come to an end. And if you're in the chat, predictions are open. So place your bets on who you think is going to be this week's champion. Will it be our European Terran or our Korean Terran? Up to you, as both represent the same team. Spawning in the top left-hand corner of Side Delta, we have the French Terran player, the Red Terran representing Team Liquid. It is Clem. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner we have his opponent, we have the South Korean Terran player, newly acquired and newly representing Team Liquid as well. It is Kior. Liquid Kior versus Liquid Clem. Beautiful. <laughs> Liquid Kior just makes me think of Final Fantasy. Like, I just think of, like, a like a potion or, or like, an elixir or something. It's good. It's good. I like it. <laughs> Very fitting. Very fitting. As we are settling into this. Oh no, already we have an interesting opener here. Okay, so Clem, he's not going for a Rax Expand. It is a single gas geyser, but he's going for a double Rax opener. For those that are curious, this is designed to shut down a Proxy 2 Rax. If Cure was going for a Proxy 2 Rax, he, this is almost like a hard counter to that build. Uh, Clem would shut it down, Clem would then counterattack, and Clem would kill Cure. As we can see, Cure is going for a Rax Expand, an economic opener instead. Now, even though this build is designed to counter a Proxy 2 Rax, you can still get damage done. You can still gain momentum. On the one side, Clem is going to be down in economy. He's going to be down in economy, but he's going to be up in Reapers. And he can be a little bit assertive, can be a little bit aggressive. Obviously, this is less aggressive than a proxy version of this because it's back at home. So it's going to take a little bit longer to really get going, but alas, Clem can maybe catch Cure off guard. As Cure, he checks the right-hand side, checks the linear third base, looking for a proxy. Marine is in position. Reaper got to zone him back, and Cure, he does block him off. <laughs> Kyo with the flank. He shuts down the first Reaper. Big pick off. Oh my god. First Reaper goes down, but we have a second Reaper on the way. And Cure, he's the one getting caught out. Oh, and it looks like Cure. Likewise, we trade one for one. Cure was not expecting a second Reaper because it is unlikely to go for a two Rax opener. So Cure, he does end up losing some of his momentum. Once you kill a Reaper, you want to go across the map, but alas, there was another waiting for him. Kyuri has to give up on the low ground, rotate into the main. You can see Clem diving up into the main base as well, but he runs into Marines. Does run into those men with gun, and we'll have to back off. Whew. Okay, the dust is going to settle. We're getting into our openers. We have a 1-1-1 one, one, one follow-up here from Kyuri. Likewise, Clem getting into his 2-1, sorry, 3cc, 2-1-1 one, one even. That is a third CC before Starport. Very economic here out of Clem, and I like this. I like this because Clem, he has a late natural. He has a worse economy. Here, he's got more mules. He already has an orbital, already built, already morphed in. So how do we come back? Faster third. This is a very common way for Terran players to come back if they do have an economic deficit early on. So again, this does make plenty of sense. We'll see if Clem can get away with this. We'll see if Clem can actually land his third TC. There's the one, one thing is building the third, the other is landing it. Because I'm sure at some point, Cure is going to scan the main, realize he's behind, and look to punish the greed. For now, getting into his own add-on swap, we're looking to hit the field, we're going for a drop across the map. Again, Cure, because of the two racks opener, he knows that he is slightly ahead in economy, so he can move out, be assertive, be aggressive. It is going to be one Cyclone, one Hellion, and two Marines. make our way towards the main. And meanwhile, what is in position here? We do have some Marines at the natural base. Tech Lab is revealed, and we won't be able to deny Stim. We do get eyes on the third CC. Oh my god, and we do get the lock on the meta before we break it, so we get the hell out of there. Cure will escape. But what's important, even though Cure didn't do a lot of damage, he scattered. He saw Stim was on the way. He saw the 2 one, -one setup. He also saw the timing of that third. So again, really good scouting information, and Kuro didn't have to, he didn't even have to scan. 
didn't even have to scan. Back at home, getting into his own third and building up towards Ravens. Interesting. Okay, so a couple of things are interesting here. One, because of the 2 on one opener, Clem, he is lacking a couple of things. Um, in a 2 on one in TVT, tank production. This tank is quite late here for Clem. It's now on the way. Instead, he's hyper fixated on this double medevac drop. Stim is done. 16 Marines are moving out across the map. This needs to get damage done. It needs to trade well here. Back at home, what does Cure have? Delayed Stim, sure, but he has Ravens. Ravens with Disables as well. These Ravens are so valuable here in TVT. So valuable in tank versus tank. Let's see if we go. The drop comes in. Oh, we do have an army in position, but not too much, to be honest. Clam, he is looking to break through. So far, yeah, we need the auto turrets, and we do force Clem back. Hot pickup. As Clem retreats, but what is he doing here? He's containing his opponent to two bases. Clem is free to expand. We do have a Cyclone jump into the main base, and oh, we don't get a kill on that one Cyclone. Oh my god. <gasps> the lock on. Oh my god. We're able to trade with the Cyclone. Kiri gets, barely gets out of range. Oh, the Marine! Marines are in position, and Kira is stuck. <laughs> Kira is going to be trapped here for quite some time, but the third base has been taken. It is fully saturated, and Kira is still contained to only two. So he does need to break free. He does need to expand. Marines, they do stim. They do contain Kira here to the top left-hand corner of the map. We do have the double Marine drop still in position. The Ravens! Oh, he wants them! Ravens, they will survive. Ooh, and Kira finally establishes his own third base. Now again, because of the faster third, Kira, he's up, sorry, Clem, he's up in workers. He's taking his gases. He's going to be moving out. Drop is still in the main, and we're now going for the drop of the Marines! Oh my god. Oh <laughs> dear. Ah, Kiri's playing with fire, but here comes the Viking, and we're gonna shut down the drop. Does fall. Meanwhile, Kiri's pushing towards the third base. Likewise, Clem moving out, not just with Marines, but also with his tanks. And he's in a good position. Kiri has no idea. Kiri has not seen the army, and we're dropping into the main. There is a turret, but we ignore the turret. Uh, the medevacs are gonna go down. These turrets, they put in a lot of work. Auto turrets are thrown down here for Cure. He will defend, but Marines, they get into the mineral line, forcing the stim at the same time. Tanks are getting within range. We do deny mining here at the third base. Ay, ay, ay. Glam all over this, doing so much damage to that CC. Meanwhile, Cure just cannot drop across the map, doesn't have the opening to do so. Tanks on siege. Two on siege, but they re-siege and now they're within range. Cure uh, trying to force his way up this ramp, but he's going to lose everything in the process. At the same time, a big double drop into the main base. It has to be, it has to be lifted. It has to lift up, get out of the main. Then pushing on forward, but we have the Ravens, the Disables. The Disables are just a little bit too good. We disable the tanks, but the Marines, the Libs, they force back Cure. Dropping the main base, still being active. Ah, the disable does run out. Liberators, they barely don't get a tank. Ah, very chaotic here, but Cure, he's holding on just barely. Likewise, across the map, this drop is keeping. Ah, this keeping Clem pinned until now. Drop does go down. You can see Cure, he wants to try to collapse on this position, and it looks like he can't catch the tanks. Spoke too soon. We do pick them up. Marines get shaved off, but the tanks do escape, and Clem is able to take his fourth. And he takes his fourth base on location. Cure still stuck on three bases. Fourth CC just now begins. But what's important is that Cure did keep his Ravens alive, and they're still gathering up energy. They're going. They're getting ready here for another disable. Ravens do change things. 
could try to break some of these entrenched positions. We do have a siege line here at the fourth, soon to be a planetary. The third looking a little more vulnerable. Only one tank. Okay, we scan ahead of time. We see the tank. We go for the disable. Tank is disabled and cure. He's gaining ground, catching Clem out of position. Yeah, the boys, they have to be pulled. Another disable and another tank. Ugh, SCVs are going down. A brutal trade for Clem. Losing 15 SCVs. Now, Clem, he will hold. But he lost so much in the process. Oh, my God. Uh, the Ravens do get cleaned up, though. Cure overextending. Reinforcements are on the way. But he has lost his Ravens. He's down in tanks. Meanwhile, this planetary is now exposed. Tanks have rotated over. From here, Curie is going to back off, taking his own fourth base, and now Curie is able to take a slight worker lead here after that trade. Going to be racing back home, building up his tank count. Second factory is just now on the way for Clem, which means Curie is catching up, making two tanks at a time, but the drop comes in. Ah, still not a planetary. SCVs are going down. Oh, Cure not ready for this, losing even more SCVs. Four workers in total. Uh-oh. Uh, as Clem pushes out, this third base is... There's nothing here. No tanks. No marines. Doom drop making its way towards the main base. Thankfully, Clem is turning back around. Ooh. Medivac goes. The full medevac goes down. And we drop into the main. Boys are being pulled. This drop is not going to work out. Ay ay ay. Vikings going to hunt this down. You're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, the drops are going to get completely cleaned up. This was so much supply. But at the same time, he's going for a big counterattack. He's going for the planetary. Ah, but the planetary is going to be able to buy time. And here come reinforcements. Tank is out of range. Oh, no. Is within range, actually. Oh, my God. Uh... Yeah, shots go off. We do pull the boys. We can just collapse in this position and Kyuri gets cleaned up. Clem just has far too much and Kyuri is losing everything. The rally! Oh, we're just misrallying tanks to their deaths. So many of them go down. Oh, God, that was seven tanks, by the way. Seven tanks fell. And Clem can keep on pushing. And yeah, this this should just be too much at this point. There's no way for Cure to hold on. He's got a couple of tanks in the back line. They're doing what they can. But Clem, he can keep on pushing. The boys, they have to be pulled into tank fire, into Marines. And Clem is looking to take aim one. GG gets called. And Clem, he starts off the finals with a lead, with a win. GG. Oh my god. And again, that was pretty back and forth. It was pretty back and forth, but there was a lot of pressure on Cure just because of the expansions of Clem. Clem was so quick to take a third, so quick to take a fourth. Um, because of that, there was just always just this uh, this threat looming over Cure. He was constantly trying to move out, trying to go for drop play, trying to be the aggressor to even up the economy. At times he succeeded, at other times did fail. And I do think things started swinging in favor of Clem when Cure went for a Doom Drop into the main. It was four full medevacs and a fifth empty medevac. It was five medevacs going into the main base. One full medevac went down to the turrets and the other three got cleaned up. That was just so much supply thrown away for Cure. And that was the moment when things swung in favor of Clem. It was right after that when Cure committed to th the tank push to try to break the planetary, which also fell on its face fell on its face it was just two big moments back to back going against cure and with that clem takes the first game but it's a best of five best of five plenty of games are ahead of us
Hold on, I need to be rowdy in Discord. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Here we go. As we're getting ready for game number two again, Clem has a lead. Still gonna be, I mean, we, sh we still should have a longer series. And again, I expect this to go back and forth. I expect us to have more of a, again, more of a competitive match between these two. At least that's what I'm hoping for. And here we go. We're loading into game. Numero dos. And spawning in the top left-hand corner of Hardled, we have the French Terran player leading the series 1-0, to zero, representing Team Liquid. It is Clem. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the South Korean Terran player representing Team Liquid as well. They are teammates. It is Kyor. Missed the prediction. Ah. <laughs> Feels bad, man. As Cure here in game two, we are going for the proxy. Now, what's important is that, unfortunately, only one. Only one Rax is being proxied. Only one SCV is across the map. So not the most committed opener here from Cure. Uh, from my understanding, with these gases being taken, I'm curious what kind of direction Cure goes in. Should be going for the Rax back, sorry, for the factory back at home. Uh, but we'll see what he can accomplish here with this initial proxy. As the Reaper should soon be the Reaper should soon be upon us. Um, actually, never mind. I was about to say that because we're taking both gas geysers, we're going for proxy marauders. Okay, here we go. This is something that Cure has been very fond of. Cure has been doing this against Terrans and against Protoss players as well. Um, the factory is being thrown down back at home, that is true. But again, because of the two gases being taken, Marauders should be on the way. Concussive Shell should be on the way as well. SV dips in. Unfortunately for Cure, it is going to be a double gas opener here from Clem. Going into a faster factory. Going into a delayed CC. Reaper moves out. Reaper does miss the proxy, by the way. And these Marauders, they can be quite tanky. Their goal, of course, to move forward to forced to cancel on the CC on the low ground and to even threaten the main base. That is the goal here for these Marauders. Reaper does threaten a dive. Oh, actually he's going to turn back around. Kira back at home is going to be safe and sound. Doesn't have to worry about his SCVs going down. We do have the Hellions on the way and we now have a second Marauder. Is Clem going to check? He doesn't know to. Here we go, the Marauders, they have arrived. They're going to be able to get down, or they get on top of that at TC. The SCV. Bunker is on the way. Reactor is going to be cancelled, and we're looking for the cancel on this CC. Boys are being pulled. Clem, he wants to save it. He wants to save the base. And we'll see if he can. I don't think he can, to be honest. It's going to be close. Third Marauder has arrived. Cyclone arrives as well. It looks like he will save the CC, or will he? The Hellion. The Hellion gets here just in time as well to wreak havoc upon that mineral line, upon these workers. That's going to be six dead workers here, and we will force a cancel. Clem, a disastrous position. He pulled the boys. He invested eight workers to save this base, and he didn't. Now he's behind. He's down in workers, down in the timing of his CC. We're pushing up the ramp. We want those Cyclones. Diva is going to be going down. Pushing up that ramp. Again, if at any moment Clem does overextend with the Cyclones, they will die. Remember, we do have that concussive shell. We do get one. Oh, we try to. So far, good kiting here out of Clem. Yeah, he does get one of the Cyclones in the end. And he does trap the second as well. It goes down. And we're snowballing out of control. There's nothing left. Only SCVs. Only boys can be pulled. And this is disastrous. Ah, so many workers are going to go down. GG gets called. It's just too much. And Cure will tie up the series one to one. GG. The proxy marauder getting out of control. Aye, aye, aye. GG. Well played. Again. 
he got what he wanted which was to cancel the natural and so much more as well because clem he fought for the natural he fought so hard for it and he lost everything in the process lost so many scvs and had to cancel the natural anyway and suddenly kira had so much more momentum on his side he was able to break free push in and yeah he was able to kill clem then and there we have a series we have a back and forth and that is what we want is what we wanted much faster game i don't expect cure to, i don't expect cure to proxy um to proxy marauder again in this series this is something that you do once in a best of five i'd be shocked to see this for a second time at any point whether it's the ace match or game four um i expect us to even if we get a proxy rex i expect it to be a different variation like like proxy rex reaper for example here we go getting into that next game and which direction are you going to take us in where are we headed as spawning in the top right hand corner of Alkyone we have the South Korean Terran player representing Team Liquid Ooh, tying up the, or being forced into a game 3 into a tied up series it is Clem. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner we have his opponent. We have the South Korean Terran representing Team Liquid, tying up the series one to one. It is Pure. As we're just getting into our openers this time the raxes are back at home for both players that's important to take note of especially on alkyone we have seen some cheeky proxy raxes here um on the other side of these minerals you can actually mine through these minerals move out across the map if you proxy racks here on the right hand side there's actually a reaper cliff going up and then further up into the main base as well so you can be a little bit cheap or you can even just float into the main if gumiho if gumiho was here we've seen him in tbt Go for a proxy rax float into the main base and proxy marauder in the main of his opponent is disgusting <laughs> it's, it's wild puppy it's wild thankfully though everything is above board above the belt everything is looking normal both players are going for double gas openers interesting because i would say that alkyona is one of the maps where it is safe to go for a rax expand but I guess because of the aggressive nature of the last game, neither player wants to take any chances. Here we go. Again, with the double gas opener, both players are going into their factories. We should be getting into cyclone production from here as well, as we have seen in TVT's past. all the cyclones so now reapers are moving out we have a cc on location here for clem and we should be seeing a cc momentarily here for cure as well this cure is going to be zoning clem away was able to shoot first was able to force him back meanwhile there are those cyclones, at least initially for Clem. We do see that Cure is going for a more traditional follow-up instead, going for a Hellion first. I'm curious if we're going to be add-on swapping here once the reactor is done. And how hard we commit. That's there we go. Cyclones are in production. Again, Cyclones, they have become a very important part of the early game TVT. Just because of how mobile they are, how much DPS they have and how quickly things can snowball in favor of one player or the other. And there it is, we're going for a Cyclone drop for Clem. Likewise, a Cyclone drop from Cure, same openers. <laughs> same follow-ups, they are mirroring each other for the most part. Uh, slight deviations here and there, like Cure going for a faster Hellion, or going for a Hellion first, just to be safe. And there's that add-on swap, we're gonna be doubling down here on Cyclone production. And likewise, so is Clem. 
The early game of TBT typically dictated here by these cyclones. We didn't really get to see this previously just because, I mean, game two we had a cheese and game number one it was a two racks opener out of Clem into 2 on one into Bioplay. Oh, as Clem is going for a double cyclone drop, meanwhile we have a cyclone marine drop here from Cure. They do come across each other! So far, good juggling. We do avoid some of those lock-ons. Up! Oh, Cure, though, losing his Cyclone, a big blow. A massive blunder there from Cure. The trades are looking good overall. They were looking even. But Clem, he escapes with his Cyclones. Meanwhile, Reapers, they dip into the natural base. They get two SCVs. Big pickoffs. May not sound like a lot, but, I mean, Clem, he's now up in workers as a result. In a mirror matchup, that's huge. Behind this, Clem getting into his own tech lab on the starport. Getting into Raven production. Cure, not too far behind. Should be starting up his upgrades momentarily as well. Drop tries to go in, but Cyclones are in position. And there it is, Interference Matrix for both players. Mass Cyclone for both players. The Cyclones are moving out. Boy, and looking at the units tab here, Clem, he's slightly ahead in Cyclones. I'm sure because of that loss earlier. And this is going to be a tight hold for Cure. Especially as he's going for some Lib Harass across the map. Raven comes in. We need those, we need those auto turrets. <gasps> oh, the air extension! Raven goes down for free, actually. Oh my god! Both players lose their Ravens. But again, Cure, he had his auto turrets. They came into play and Cure shuts this down. Ay, ay, ay. Again, Clem distracted by the Liberator. At, a, at the wrong moment. A big reason for that fight going Cure's way was Clem, he was focusing on that Lib defense. Now Cure, he can push forward. Reinforces with that Metamac, with those Marines. Repairs are upon us. A lot of these Cyclones are still very low. But they are being topped up, just in time. Just barely in time as we push on forward. So far, the juggling is looking okay, but the defense advantage. The defense advantage, the, the repairs are just too good. Clem even pulling a couple of extra SCVs there to top them up. Cure going for a drop into the main. Uh, catching some workers. See, as you can see, it just doesn't take too long at all to kill an SCV. Not with Cyclones. Three workers go down. The Ravens! The Ravens! Ah! Oh my god, the Ravens survive. <laughs> Behind this, Cure getting his own throw CC up and running. Likewise, so is Clem. Cure coming back in with those Cyclones. They sit by. Another two workers. Cyclone for a Cyclone. Oh, we do get some extra hits in, though. Clem losing a little bit too much, and he has to lift up. He has to evacuate that third base. Cure, he has too much momentum pushing forward with that Raven. Auto turrets are thrown down. Once again, another Raven falls from Clem, not able to throw down anything. Ravens? Clem control... Sorry, Ravens? Clem's... Uh, Clem's Raven control. There we go. <laughs> All, all over the place. <laughs> uh, a little bit lackluster this game, not gonna lie. Job comes in, gets cleaned up. Cyclones are going down. How do we not have a player called Raven? What <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. We have Baby Marine, but no Raven. Shaking my head. For now, though, third CC is getting up and running. Oh, cure. The, the, the dust is going to be celebrating. We're calming down. We're calming things down from here. Trades have been going on back and forth. But now both players should be settling. Both players should be getting into tank production. Looking at the units tab here, we have two tanks for both players. One Raven each as well after the chaotic early game. Cure is pushing out with a couple of marines, but has been spotted by Clem. He's able to keep up. Cure does have the map control. Oh my god, that drop about to come across the drop of his opponents of Cure. Does pull back in time.
but I'm getting Cure versus Beyond vibes here. We were, it feels like we were just on Akiona with the TBT. Here we go. Cure is out pushing out. And even in tank counts, we have Clem slightly behind in upgrades, but plus one defense should finish up momentarily. It is only bio upgrades, so not the biggest advantage from Cure, but I mean, he is slightly ahead in upgrades overall. Marines are pushing forward. He does scan ahead of time. Does see the tanks. It's going to back off. We're going to rotate around. Clem is working on his fourth CC. So is Cure. Cure is his own location. Tanks are going to be sieging. Cure does come across that depot. And he is going to retreat. Again, both players just kind of posturing, essentially. Clean, cleaning up a couple of links here and there. Links, Marines here and there. Tanks are sieging. We're getting into a Viking tank here for Clem, as we're getting into Viking production. Cure on the flip side, going for some more drop heavy play instead. Trying to. As he's being forced back. Cure still not getting into Vikings of his own. We're we'll pushing on the right hand side. He, he does scan ahead of time. Here comes the disables. Oh, but we on siege just in time. Oh, that won't save the tanks though. Both tanks, they still go down. And Cure, he sieges up behind the mineral line. A brutal position. At the same time, Cure, he dives on the fourth base. Clem, he's being pulled apart, but he does get on top of the tanks. Three tanks go down. Ah, but he's losing so many SCVs, and we go for the CC. We go for the dive. Cure, he's going to take this fight as well. He can get on top of the tank. And GG gets called. Cure, he snowballs out of control, completely pulling Clem apart in a matter of seconds. GG. And Cure, he does take a lead in the series, one game away from becoming this week's champion. GG, well played. All it took, all it took was one moment where Clem, he didn't have eyes on the army. He wasn't aware that Clem, sorry, that Cure was pushing in on the right-hand side, got behind the mineral line, got a really nasty position, and forced an overreaction, or, or forced, forced a reaction out of Clem. Forced his army to have to respond to come all the way to his third base, exposing his fourth. And yeah, Cure, he was just all over Clem. GG. Really well done. And with that, again, one more win is all that Cure needs. Clem, he needs to fight back here and now to force the ace match. And what map are we going to be loading into? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the vetoes were. Still in the dark. And there we go. Game four is going to be on Oceanborn. Oh, boy. Oceanborn, a map where you can settle into three bases and we have actually seen a lot of late game play on Oceanborn but at the same time very short rush distance by ground we have seen a lot of proxy play on Oceanborn I'm curious I'm curious where this is going to take us and where we are headed take it away take it away as it could all end here Hello, the original Booger. Hello. Liquid Cure versus Liquid Clem. Could be a very fluid series. Oh. <laughs> este Aista. Very fluid. And personally, you know, I hope for an ace match. I want this to go the distance. I want this to go all the way to game number five, but the pressure is on. Our red Terran and spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Oceanborn we have the French Terran player representing Team Liquid down in the series he needs to fight back here and now it is Clem and spawning in the top left hand corner we have his opponents we have the South Korean Terran the blue Terran representing Team Liquid as well one game away from becoming this week's Kung Fu Cup champion it is Cure. 
Cure. He took down Bjorn to make it this far. Can he take down Clem as well in those finals? I'm ready for it. Well, meanwhile, we do have an update when it comes to the third place match. For those that are curious, specifically for Kung Fu Cup, it's a very rare thing. But uh, there is a third place match and both Bjorn and Wayne did duke it out to determine who comes third and who comes fourth. And in the end, it was Bjorn. Bjorn did 2-0 Wayne. Again, Bjorn coming in as the heavy favorite, to be fair. But uh, those results did just come in. Um, they weren't covered or they weren't casted, unfortunately. Um, they are played at the same time as the finals. So it's very difficult for them to ever be casted. The third place match, I mean. But that did occur. Meanwhile, we have some interesting openers. We have a double gas opener here from Clem going for a Rax into Factory. Meanwhile, Kior going for something more economic. Going for a Rax expand instead here on the low ground. So an economic greedy opener here from Cure. And a more safe and soon to be aggressive opener from Clem. So we're establishing our roles here. Cure is going to be the defender. Clem going to be the aggressor. And Clem is aware of that. He did see the CC on location. Likewise, Cure with his SCV scout also saw the factory. So <laughs> they are aware. Here we go. I love that we kept the SCV as well. The goal here for Clem is to, choke, to soak one of those hits. And he does soak it. Ooh. Just like that, Clem, he does shoot first. Does force back that Reaper. Oh. Oh, the Marine has arrived, though. Another SCV is pulled. And Cure is holding. Again, it's a slight kind of a, a little... A slight kind of micro uh, adaptation there from a lot of these, um, these top-tier Terran players to have that SCV just to soak a hit. Was not enough. And Cure, he does hold on for the time being. Meanwhile, we're reinforcing with another Reaper. Hellion is on the way as well. The CC does finish. It won't be delayed. Clem tries to bypass the army. Tries to slip into the main base. But once again, Cure, he does keep up with the movement of Clem. And behind this, Cure, he's getting into his 1-1-1. Clem getting into his own CC on location. We're getting there. And Cure, he can't really break free until he gets a Cyclone up and running. Cyclone is in production. Meanwhile, Cure bypasses the army, is going for the CC. Can he delay it? It's going to be close. Oh, it is going to be close. And it looks like we do not get a kill on that SCV. It barely does finish just in time. Reaper goes down. Oh, that was close, though. Behind this, we do have a tech lab on that starport. Looks like we're going to be getting into, I imagine, earlier Raven production. Meanwhile, we have Clem doubling down and getting into a Cyclone drop. Again, drop play early on is quite popular. We saw that we saw it last game from both players. Clem moving out with a handful of Marines. Cyclone to meet up with his Hellions and Reapers here in the center of the map. Can a cure hold on? The Raven should come out in time to throw down an auto turret. We're going straight for a third TC as well. The greed here from Cure. Trying to get further ahead economically. But here we go. We have a split push. We have Clem getting ready to push into the natural and also a drop into the main. The drop does force a reaction out of those Cyclones. SCBs are ooh, just barely not going down. We have the auto turret and Cure. He holds onto his natural and he does hold onto his main as well. Only losing one SCV so far. Good defense. A solid defense here from Cure. Tanks are coming out. There is no more auto turrets. Tank is going to siege, but the Cyclones, can they get on top of it? Barely doesn't. Cleaned up the Marines, but not much else. It's Cure, he is holding. He's maintaining his economic lead. Maintaining his worker counts. Raven has arrived for some auto tarts as well. We have a disable available. Good. Clem is pushing forward. Again, he's threatening that dive. Forces the on siege as well. Yeah, boys, they have to be pulled deep. The Ravens. Both Ravens go down. Big pickoffs. 
Clem, he may not have killed the tank, he may not have killed the mineral line, but two ravens, well worth it. And he's just pulling Cure apart. Dropping into the main. And with the medevac, like, again, these cyclones are safe and sound. Two back up. Again, Curious Opener just falling on its face. There's one Raven left. And there's the Disable. We shut down the tank. We shut down the Raven as well. And it looks like Clemmy should have too much here. We have a couple of cycles coming in from the high ground, but so many SCVs are falling. So many SCVs are cycles as well. We get on top of the tank. And this should just be far too much damage. GG gets called. Clem snowballs out of control. And he takes game number four. We are going to the ace match. GG. We're going all the way to game number five. Again, Cure just being a little bit too greedy. Rushing into his third TC behind it as well. As a reminder, again, did go right for that third base. And from the from the get-go, he was just losing a little bit too much too quickly. He lost his Ravens initially. Uh, lost even some of his Marines. Again, just losing too much. And the, these, like... Every unit counts here in the early game. Every unit does count. And it all comes down to our final game. It comes down to game number five. Oh, and it's going to be on Hecate. Here we go. The final game of the series... It's been a long one, it always is. Five five hours, Bobby, five hours. Oh. One final game. We haven't really seen too much late game between these two. We had a late game TVT between Cure and Bion, but it feels like these two players have just been very aggressive and very in each other's faces. Things ra rarely getting up to like a proper four base setup. Like four base versus four base. Like, the closest we got was Psy Delta, but even then, like, uh, it was Clem being up in bases and Cure just being hyper-aggressive trying to break him. Try to punish him. But that could all change here. Are we finally going to see two maxed out armies face off? We'll see. Good. I enjoy a little competition. Oh no. <laughs> Fear Drag isn't isn't here. Someone has to whip out the puns. D does someone have to whip out the puns? Is that that does it always have to be one? Aye, aye, aye. But here we go. Spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Hecate, we have the French Terran player representing Team Liquid forcing the ace match, forcing game five. It is Clamp. And spawning in the top right-hand corner, we have his opponent, we have the South Green Terran player. His teammate, also representing Team Liquid, being forced into set ace match. It is Cure. Liquid Clem equals Clam Chowder. Liquid Cure equals Coffee, Beer, Bourbon, Cough Syrup. Those are all very different things. How is, how are you... <laughs> I don't think Liquid Cure is beer. I don't, I don't, I, I, I. Maybe, maybe for some people it is. True, true. Aye, aye, aye. Maybe for some people. Smooch. <laughs> Liquid Cure can be what you want it to be. There you go. As we are going to be moving out across the map. Clem. This time both Clem and Cure are going for double gas openers. So faster factories. No one is cutting corners. No one is being too economic. The SCV scout does confirm this. Both players, they get eyes on each other's factories, so they both know that, you know, they're both going to be working towards additional Reapers, Hellions, and Cyclones. That should be a tell as well to keep the first Reaper back at home. Just to be safe and sound. As 
we are going to be backing off and settling into this. You can see Clem just waiting on top of the ramp for any kind of Reaper to move out. Likewise, so is Cure. Ah, oh, the, the Ursadak. Hello, Odd. <laughs> I'll be honest, the Ursadak is, it looks so weird. Like, it's like, it's like an elephant hippo, it's like a hairy elephant hippo creature. I mean, I don't mind it, but... I think, I think it's because I'm just, I'm just so used to seeing, like, the taste lobe or the artosa lobe or, like, the little birds. It's, uh, it's a unique critter that we don't get to see too often, that we don't get to see often enough, maybe, is the better way to put it. Ah. We're getting used to it, but we're getting used to it. As we're getting into our openers, again. So we have the Rax Factory to CC on the low ground from both players, getting into our 1-1-1. No one is doing anything crazy and getting into a second factory for mech play or a second Rax for a 2-1-1. That's it's all by the book. And just like we've seen previously, we should be getting into additional cyclone production. There's Yadon Swap getting into double cyclone production for Clem. Interesting from Cure, he actually makes a wave of Marines first before the add-on swap. So we have a slight deviation here from our blue Terran player. It is going to delay Cyclones for him, unfortunately. But, um, he should be able to get them without too much issue. That of are on the way. Cure, of course, going to be going for a Marine Cyclone drop. As he moves out. And the move out is going to be spotted by these Reapers. Oh, it does have to turn back around. One SCV goes down. As we dive into the main. Dive into the main base. Additional SCVs are going to be falling. Good trades here for Clem. Three SCVs for three Re for three Reapers. Not too bad. Bearing in mind that Reapers, they do lose value over the course of the game. They don't scale well into the mid game at all. So we get worker damage. We force the drop to turn around. And we get a full scatter the main. And here we go. Clem coming in for another drop as Cure moves out. Do we have anything at home to defend? We have nothing. Nothing back at home. We have a couple of Cyclones in production. But Clem is going right for that Mineral Line. Or for the add-ons, even. SCVs are going down. At the same time, Cure pushing towards the Natural. Oh my god, that's five dead SCVs! At the same time, though, Cure. He does take control of the Natural Waste of Clem. Denying so much mining time as well. Auto Tarts are throwing out the Raven. No! Raven is going to fall as well. Big pickoffs. It's saying that. Clem, he is forced out. Meanwhile, Cure, he still has control of the natural. He hasn't killed as many SCVs, but he's denying a lot of mining time. Gets on top of the Cyclones, trading one for one. Oh! Oh my god. Hot pickup as well, barely keeping the Cyclone alive. He wants that CC! It's so low! It's oh so low, and it looks like he takes down another Cyclone. Can he get the Raven? He will get the Raven as well. And 15 SCVs, and here come reinforcements. GG gets called. He snowballs out of control. Cure. He will take the series 3-2, becoming this week's Kung Fu Cup champion. GG. We will not get a late game between these two. <laughs> GG, well played. Cure, oh my god, committing so much here to his drop, or to his push, I should say, as Clem only went for a single drop into the main. Cure, he sent everything across the map, and again, really good juggling, really good micro, of course, targeting down the Cyclones, targeting down the Ravens. And Clem just lost too much. He lost too much trying to regain control of his natural. And Cure does take it in the end. GG. GG, well played. A good effort here by Clem to make it to the finals and make it into the ace match. Really well done. But alas, barely not able to take down Cure here in the finals. Did go to the ace match though, so mad props. Good series. A good fun series here. Very high pace. Very back and forth. GG. <laughs> a bit of a faster finals actually compared to what we usually have. Went to game, went to game five, yes. But again, just we had a lot of cheese, a lot of proxies, a lot of aggression as well. A lot of aggression between our players. That's what we want to see. That's that's what we want out of TVTs. That's what we want. <laughs> Regardless, I hope everyone had a great time here. Hope everyone enjoyed themselves here in Kung Fu Cup. Now, as a quick reminder, we're running out of Kung Fu Cups. 
Um, this is a tournament organized by SC Boy. These are the people behind WTL. We also cost World Team League on a weekly basis. But as I mentioned at the at the beginning of the broadcast, there are only 11 weeks, aka 11 rounds, of World Team League before the playoffs. And Kung Fu Cup, it goes alongside the round robin stage. It doesn't go alongside the playoffs. So we have one week left. One week left of Kung Fu Cup before we are done for the year, for 2023 one more week which is a bit of a shame because this tournament is so much fun um it's just it's it's so much fun because we bring together so many different players from different regions the europeans come in we get a couple of americans coming in and the koreans as well the reason for that is because of the prize pool the prize pool is massive and this isn't a bad time for europe it's it's at an okay time for korea it's late it's like 1 a.m in korea or midnight midnight or 1 a.m not too bad <laughs> Um, and even not the worst time for the Americans, as uh, the NA players are waking up at around this time as well. So, um, yeah, it's it's a great tournament. We bring together everyone from all around the world, and yeah, it's been it's been a good run so far. You know, ten solid weeks, and we have one more, one more to round off the year before we go on a bit of a hiatus. Um, from my understanding, World Team League playoffs again. There's only one week left for the round robin stage, but the playoffs are good. There's going to be a bit of a break. There's going to be a break because of a couple of things. One, this weekend, Homestory Cup. Homestory Cup, it snuck up on us, but Homestory Cup is this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Be sure to tune in for some Homestory Cup action. We won't be a part of it. There is a B stream, but I think Steadfast is covering the B stream, and uh, the main stream is being covered by Wardy, Rotterdam, and Loco, so they got you covered there. Uh, we will most likely have a replay cast next week. Um, Homestory Cup, they're usually really good at releasing replays like right after the tournament. So we're most likely, I, I probably won't be able to watch live, especially because we have our own casting to do. So we're probably going to be going over the Homestore Cup replays next week or the week after that, when we do have time. And it's back to back because after Homestore Cup, DreamHack Atlanta. DreamHack Atlanta is the week after, sorry, um, the week after Homestore Cup is the IEM qualifiers. And then the week after that is DreamHack Atlanta. So. GMAC Atlanta is coming up on us. The IM qualifiers are around the corner as well before GMAC Atlanta, which is a little bit weird. And I don't personally, I don't like that the IM qualifiers are before DreamHack, but uh, whatever, it's, <laughs> it's it's fine. I guess it's fine. From my understanding, um, the IM qualifiers are so early just to make sure that the qualified players get their visas. You know, we've, we've had visa issues in the past and we want to make sure that there are no visa issues anymore. So um, or we, we reduce the visa issues as much as possible, giving the players as much time to get those visas going. So that uh, that is going to be happening momentarily. We will be casting the IM qualifiers as we always do. We always cast the qualifiers for IM and DreamHack and everything. And um, I should actually message them. Uh, we will most likely be a part of DreamHack Atlanta as well. Uh, last year, we were, I think, the C stream or the D stream. We were one of the side streams for DreamHack Atlanta. Uh, covering the open bracket and we're going to be looking into that we're going to be looking to do the same thing once again as we always do here on the cranky duckling so plenty of starcraft coming up plenty of starcraft on the horizon uh, home story cup dream hack iem then of course we have wtl after that so we have all of our own weekly tournaments december is going to be busy <laughs> it's, it's going to be a busy month um and i mean there's going to be a bit of a it's going to be a busy month but January is actually going to be a little bit light for us. January is, we're going to be calming things down in January. We're going to be taking some breaks. Uh, instead of casting every day, January, it's going to be like three casts a week instead. Like we're calming things down, taking a break for the New Year's um, for the first time since last year, January, basically. <laughs> uh, we, we we don't take breaks here on the Cracky Duckings unless we're forced to. So be sure to tune in. If you enjoyed the cast, follow us. Follow us on Facebook instagram we have a youtube channel as well we have a twitter we have a discord server all things cranky ducklings exclamation mark socials in the chat so again if you enjoyed the cast if you want some more action we got you covered we got you covered all over the place i highly recommend checking out youtube if you watch starcraft on youtube then we upload on a daily basis plenty of vods plenty of content on youtube and we cast everything so everything eventually is on our youtube channel as well um thousands literally thousands of of matches on youtube and uh, thousands more to come 
I, 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 I think I have like 300 VODs ready to go live over the next couple of months. Look, we're three months behind. <laughs> we're three months behind on YouTube. We're catching up slowly but surely. And I think I have like 370 like matches to, to upload. We're getting there. We're getting there. We upload one tournament a day on our YouTube channel. Or sometimes two tournaments a day. Regardless, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thanks so much for the support. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Hope you enjoyed the stream. We're going to be back tomorrow with a replay cast um, of ESL Open Cup Asia. ESL Open Cup Asia was a couple of days ago, and we didn't get to cast it live. We casted half of it live, um, but we were having connectivity issues, and our, our stream... Sorry, I was um, disconnecting from Battle.net at the time. So, replay cast to catch up. We're going to be covering the semifinals, both semifinals and the finals of ESL Open Cup Asia. It's going to be tomorrow, less than 24 hours. See you then. Otherwise, enjoy your week, enjoy your weekend, enjoy Home Street Cup, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for some ESL Asia action. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Bye, bye. See you next time. Fala, galera. <laughs>